Sheku Bayo was a well-liked, healthy young man who at the age of 31 had no previous history of violence. It would appear he left his home sometime between 7 and 7.15 a.m. and walked an approximate distance of a mile down to Hayfield Road where we gathered, this, where we gathered at lunchtime. Police officers who were in the midst of a shift change at the Cody Police Office responded to an alert following calls from a member of public, members of the public, that a black man was walking down the street with a knife. We are advised that some two police vans, three marked police cars, and one unmarked car went to the scene, and that a minimum of nine uniformed police officers, along, along with two CID, attended. We understand that four police officers reached there first and engaged with Sheku Bayo. A struggle took place, and what we can confirm is that out of those four police officers, the policewoman talked about by the police federation was part of this group. She was not on her own. Five other officers arrived very shortly afterwards. There has been a great deal of speculation about what happened, and while some have been desperate to paint a version for the benefit of themselves or of the media, the family have tried to keep an open mind and what happened is a matter for a live investigation. But they are entitled to say that Sheku Bayo never deserved to die. If anyone has information in this room or in this community that they have not provided to the police or to the Perth for whatever reason, I would urge you to contact Perth. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, then to contact Sheku's family or my office. As for what happened, you will appreciate we have been given a great deal of information over the last five weeks that we cannot release into the public domain, despite others who insist on releasing snippets of what happened that night, that morning. We do know as a fact from CCTV and from statements received that no officer was ever on their own. We know as a fact that CS spray, power spray, a form of pepper spray and batons were used by officers who first engaged with Sheku Bayo. In the last five weeks, the family state there appears to have been, in some quarters of the police, a disturbing images of violence being painted, ascribing repeatedly to a large man stereotypical characteristics of extraordinary strength and dangerousness and attempt to blame Sheikh Bayo for his own death. The family want me to state in public, for a start, Sheikh Bayo was not six foot plus. He was five foot ten inches, two inches smaller than me. He weighed 12 stones, 10 pounds, lighter than myself. The negative imagery, as far as the family are concerned, has deliberately been used to enforce an image of a mad and dangerous man. None of this has been helpful in searching for the truth, but it has compounded the agony of the family, who feel as though they have been deliberately provoked and an attempt to try and get them to react. Let me say this in response of the family. Police officers at all times are expected to be professionals. Police officers, of course, have a right to defend themselves, but any use of force must at all times be lawful, necessary, and proportionate in the circumstances. We understand that several other officers who arrived from the scene also intervened. That Sheku Bayo was brought to the ground as several officers tried to apply handcuffs to the rear and managed to put on leg restraints. He was in what is known as the prone position, face down. There was a struggle, but at this stage, he wasn't going anywhere, and he would never get up again himself. As they tried to apply the handcuffs, we know that Sheikh Mubayo began to lose consciousness. Many, of, many people have asked, what is the cause of death? Many people have speculated. Many people at the start, who should know better, trying to talk about what was going to happen with regards to the post and what we can say here and there is that there is no answer. We do not know the cause of death that is yet to be determined. The Crown Office have instructed two senior Crown pathologists. The family have instructed two independent pathologists, Professor Anthony Vasutel, who is probably the most senior forensic pathologist in Scotland, as well as the UK's foremost forensic pathologist forensic pathologist Dr. Nat Carey, who dealt and deals with the Hillsborough inquest cases as well as the Sorbonne murders. 
Positional asphyxiation has been floated and is suspected, but the postmortem is inconclusive as the pathologists, both the Crown and the independent pathologists, do not have the circumstances in which Sheku Bio died. Positional asphyxia is a form of asphyxia which occurs when someone's position prevents the person from breathing adequately. A significant number of people have died suddenly during restraint by police officers in this country. Research suggests that restraining a person in a face-down position is likely to cause greater restriction of breathing than restraining a person face-up. And we know that police officers in the United Kingdom are supposed to be taught to avoid restraining people face down or to do so only for a very short period of time. We also know that the use of CS spray is supposed to be carefully monitored because it can also bring about positional asphyxiation. This is a complicated inquiry. There are a number of risk factors which may increase the chance of death, but the way the subject is restrained can only increase the risk of death. For example, kneeling, on someone or otherwise placing, the, placing weight on the subject. However, we do not know the cause of death, but this is one of the areas that is being investigated. After Sheku lost consciousness, CPR was attempted at the scene. This was around 7.34 a.m. CPR was then attempted in the ambulance, which arrived at 7.45 at Victoria Hospital. Many staff we know now, 14 staff, desperately tried to save Sheku's life for which his family will be eternally grateful. But he was officially pronounced dead at 9.04 a.m. We also now know that when Sheku Bayo arrived at the hospital <coughs> unconscious, that he was still handcuffed, with leg restraints, still in place, which the doctors demanded the removal of. The family believed this was inappropriate and absolute disgrace. We understand that reports were released in the minutes after Sheku lost consciousness of a policewoman having been stabbed, which several hours later, Police Scotland retracted and corrected as being untrue. The family want to know who is responsible for releasing those reports, who is responsible for briefing the local politicians with false information. Following Sheku's death, Colette returned to her home at around 9 a.m. She found the house in disarray, the back door lying open, Sheku was not at home, so as she left, she spoke to his best friend Zahid, who told her of Sheku not being himself and a fight that they had had in the early hours. She left to go to her mum's and she phoned the police. When she returned, just after 9 o'clock, a police car with two uniformed officers and two CID were waiting for her. They took her into her house, CID sat her down, whilst uniform went into the kitchen for a few minutes. For what purpose? Colette does not know. We now know that the CID and other officers had been briefed about the circumstances of Sheku Bayo as early as eight, 10 minutes past 8 that morning. They did not tell her that Sheku was dead and began to ask her questions about him to build up a picture and get as much detail as they could. Meanwhile, a few minutes away, a full-scale fight police operation had been taking place before the perk, the independent investigators, could arrive. The police officers told Colette that they needed to take her to the police station. Before leaving, they took her house keys off her, and when she asked why, their explanation was that it was a crime scene, which she did not understand. After arriving at the police station, and much toing and froing and confusion, and she sat there with Lorraine, her mother, at around 11 o'clock, two CID eventually told her in the room that there was no easy way of saying this, but a partner chef was dead. They said, and I quote, that he was found on a public street by a member of the public. They said that it was the member of the public who called for an ambulance, but he died on the street. Meanwhile, we have learned that at the same time that Colette was in that police station, that nine, all nine of the officers had returned to the station and were placed in the same room together from 9 a.m. towards 11 a.m. before a senior officer arrived to try to speak to them. Those officers left that police station and left that room later on that evening. Collect in the meantime at that police station was distraught as the two officers delved deep into Sheku's backgrounds, his friends, 
as they tried to build a picture of him, as they tried to ask her if there was any conflict in her relationship. Never once did they tell her that Shecky died in police custody. She was allowed to go home at around 1 p.m. and told to contact Shecky's family. Those same two officers attended at Caddy's home, Shecky's sister, and the same systematic lies were replayed out until they then returned at 4.30 p.m. that day, that Sunday, and told Caddy and Addie and her family that their gaffer had told them to tell them that Sheku had actually died in police custody. Following understandable anger from the family and demands, Addie asked who the gaffer was, and he was told it was the Chief Superintendent Gary McEwen, the area commander for Fife. Addie asked for that officer to attend his home because he knew it through the racial equality work within Fife within the next 24 hours. And Gary McEwen attended the family home by 5.30 and told the gathered family the first actual version of what happened to Sheku Bayo when the police attended and engaged with them. Of the reports of a black man carrying a knife, the police responding, he told them that they used batons, they used CS spray, that they used restraints and handcuffs, that he lost consciousness, consciousness and died. He then told the family not to speak to anyone or to the media, but just after he left their home, the police released a media release providing details of Sheku's death. Police Scotland, over those several hours, from 9 o'clock onwards, not before, gave five different versions of events to the family. That is a matter of great concern. Sensitive and thorough handling of the investigation into the golden hours following the death is critical to evidence gathering and setting direction and quality of the investigation to follow. The family does not understand, and I don't think there's anything unreasonable about this, but they do not understand why the officers engaged, who engaged with Sheku Bayo, were not immediately suspended without prejudice after his death. It's a matter of public concern that officers remain at their desks or in contact with the public, pending the outcome of an investigation into a death in custody. For the Chief Constable to suspend officers without prejudice, the family states, is not a question of prejudging the outcome of the investigation, but it ensures neutrality, integrity of the investigation, transparency, and stopping officers conferring, as well as protecting those officers who were involved in the incident. This as much protects those police officers. Perk, the Police Investigation Review Commissioners, we understand were ordered to take control. This was an independent body that was set up in 2013 with the powers of arrest, detention, and the ability to seize evidence when investigating the police over serious incidents. They came onto the scene later that morning, but we understand that the nine officers who had been in that room for some hours together for several hours refused to provide any details of what happened. We understand that the Federation subsequently stated that they wished to know what their status was but the fact remains that Perk stated publicly that they asked several times for statements which the police officers refused to provide. As police officers, they will know they had the essential 